Um, session will meet on Tuesday. No praise team on Thursday. Saturday, they're having a national prayer walk in Washington. Starting at noon. Y'all go. Pastor Butch will be here next week and Pastor Wayne the following week. The after school program, Growing Roots, will begin on October the 6th. Uh, we're going to be reaching out to our community and offering them an opportunity for kids who may need tutoring. We'll have tutors here and uh, we're restricted to 25 kids for a variety of reasons. But uh, if you're interested in helping, see Denise. We can always use people to help clean up and so forth. So, uh, but she uh, she will put you to work. Thank you for Denise for heading this whole program up. It's it's, it's kind of exciting what what God's going to be doing in the yep. next uh, Praise the Lord. several months. So, uh, and one of the things that I'm looking forward to is that what happens on our after school program may end up flowing into especially our Friendship Sunday because we will make special invitation to the parents to come Friendship Sunday and maybe even the kids from our after school program maybe even sing or something, do something for us. So, so uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, they're also on the 11th shoebox packing will be here. So if you're interested in helping pack the shoeboxes, uh, show up on October 11th for that. Also, Bible study starts that evening, evening of the 11th, and uh, there's a sign-up sheet back there if you're interested in attending our Bible study either on Sunday night or on Wednesdays, there's a sign-up sheet. I need to know that so that I can print the materials since I have written these materials. So, um, Are there any other announcements? I'm just going to encourage everybody on Saturday at noon to please be in prayer. Spend a little time in prayer and pray for our nation as Frank and Graham will be in, down there in Washington praying. Yep. And pray for protection over the over the prayers. Prayer yep. yep. Because I'm sure there's going to be some protests. Anything else? Greet one another and then turn to page 271.
to share this morning? Donna has a birthday tomorrow. Who does? Donna does. Well, who's going to play for her as we sing? <laughs> I've been battling a toothache, and uh, that's getting better. Praise the Lord. You praise the Lord, yep. Yes. 
Some people will use the doctors for any excuse, won't they? <laughs> Anybody else? I talked to Kim uh, this week. Uh, Tanner's home, literally, he's in his own home. Uh, Tanner's staying at the house, and uh, he's, uh, of course, no visitors, of course, but uh, and, and they're very strict as far as what's coming in and, and so forth. But you, if you're interested, you can send cards, and she goes through them all and. Uh, Kind of cleans them up if that's, you know, just to, just to make sure. But uh, he seems to be doing very well. So uh, so continue to remember Tanner. But uh, things are things are looking up for him. So. Walter Ross has had to tell everybody how I forgot to say that. Okay. okay. And <clears throat> and I and I talked uh, uh, with Barbara, and uh, her sister is doing pretty well at Johns Hopkins. Uh, Jane seems to be doing pretty well. Um, her problems were kind of multiple because she went in for back surgery and ended up having a heart problem to begin with, so they had to deal with that first. But she seems to be doing, doing fairly well, so keep Jane in your prayers as well. Anybody else? Another praise, Marty Rosenberry's continually getting stronger and better. Good. Good. <clears throat> Anything else? Let's pray. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise because you are worthy. Amen. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you, Father, for the reality that you can do anything. We just open up and let you have your way with us. Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, just encourage us as we lift up our requests. Father, there have been many on our prayer list that just, you know, they just really need your visitation. Father, we thank you for the reports that we got today. We thank you, Father, that you're still on the throne. Yep. Jesus yep. is still Lord. Yep. And we declare that Lordship over every one of these circumstances and situations. Yes. Father, we just ask that even now, at this very hour, that your presence be real in the lives of those on our prayer list. Yeah. Father, for all of our first responders, for our military, for our police, for our fire persons, Father, the power of your presence would be with them. That, the, that Father, you would encourage them in, in spite of all that's going on around, around us. Father, that, that your very grace and mercy would be with them. Those that don't know you, that this would be the day that they would turn their lives to you because you're still the answer. You're the answer to all of our problems. Father, and as we lift up our government, Father, you, you are the answer to our government. Yes. You're the answer to our problems. You're the answer to all this stress and struggle and difficulty. Father, it's just obvious to us just how real the enemy is. Yes. And how real he's fighting because his days are numbered. Yes. And we thank you and praise you, Father, that Jesus' Lordship yes. will prevail. Yes. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just declare that our government will once again turn back to seek you, yes. to seek your yes. direction, yes. your purpose, you. Father, for this nation. Yes. Father, we just give you the thanks and the praise. Father, we ask that you indeed provide peace to Jerusalem. Father, that both Jew and Arab would come to recognize that true peace really comes when Jesus yes. is Lord. So, Father, just open up their hearts that they might see that Jesus is the Messiah and their Lord and Savior. In all these things, we give you praise. And it's all because of Jesus, in whose name we pray the prayer he's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our word.
you so much, Father, for blessing us that we can bless others. Use these gifts for your glory. Touch somebody's life for Jesus, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on down. A couple weeks ago, I missed her. She was laying down, and I didn't see her. I see her today. No, just go. Come on. Come on. Get on down. What's that? That's the Bible. What's so important about this? Hmm? You can read it, yep. But what's so important about reading it? You what? Okay. What else is important about reading the Bible? Wheels are turning, I'm just waiting for them to engage. It's because the Bible is the truth. The Bible's the truth. And there's nothing in the Bible that doesn't apply to every aspect of our lives. That's why God tells us to read His Word. In fact, in the Psalms, it says that we're to meditate on it. Do you know what meditate means? Spend time. Think about it. Meditate means to cogit, you know, really, really figure what's God trying to tell us. Because God tells us in His Word how we live our lives and how we're supposed to live. And how much grace, that's God's goodness, He can pour out on us. God's Word, the Bible, isn't any better book to read. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your Bible. Thank you for your Word. Use it and plant it deep within our hearts. In Jesus' name. So let us sing, Break Thou the Bread of Life.
the Word of God. There isn't anything, there hasn't been anything published that has done more and affected lives greater than the Bible. Amen. It's still, it's still the one manuscript that outsells everyone ever had one. Some people, like myself, might have four, five, six Bibles. I've got several translations, one of which is the Greek, and you can borrow it any time. Yeah. But the reality is, is that if it just sits on the shelf, what good is it? There was a <clears throat> pastor visited a home, and the and the wife of the of the family wanted to make sure that the Bible was right out there where he could see it. And he walked in the house, and she invited him on in further. And he places his hat down on top of the Bible. She goes through every gyration possible without trying to be too obvious, trying to get that hat off of the Bible so he can see the Bible. It doesn't make any difference, and I want us to understand something. It makes no difference who you are impressing with the Bible if you're not reading it and living by it. I heard a total unrelated story this morning, and I've got to share it because it's just a fantastic story, even though it's unrelated. Because it was taken directly from the book of Malachi, the, a pastor was preaching on, on giving because it, for some strange reason his congregation wasn't responding like they should, and so he was preaching from Malachi. And he decided that he wanted to really encourage people to give in the life of the congregation. And so he said, I will give someone the opportunity to pick three hymns for the largest contribution today. And when they received the offering, he saw a check written for $1,000. And he said, who wrote that check? And a little old lady from the back, she says, I wrote it. He says, well, you come right on up here because you get to pick three hymns. He, she came up and in her bashful little way, he says, what three hymns do you want to pick? She says, I'll take that one and that one and that one. <laughs> the Word of God. The Word of God. I want us to look at five things today. First of all, it's because of the Word of God that we can be born again. Amen. It's because of the Word of God. Peter writes it this way in the first chapter. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. Mm -hmm. You've been born again by the Word of God. Well, the Word of God tells us in John chapter 1, verse 12, that, that those who receive him, believing on his name, are given the authority to be children of God. Jesus tells Nicodemus at night in the third chapter of John that he had to be born again to see the kingdom of God. The Word of God tells us not only that we must be born again, but it tells us how we can be born again. Yep. To receive him and believe on his name. And so that word believe means trust totally in his name. Our responsibility then, if we are to really become born again, we must be born again according to the word of God. I heard politicians for the last several decades talk about being a born again different kind of politician. 
That only means that they changed their mind somewhere. It had nothing to do with changing their lives because the only one that really changes our life, and we'll get into it a little bit further, is when we are truly born again by the Word of God. First John tells us, I mean the letter of John in his first chapter tells us that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth, and that Word was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only way we can truly be born again, and the Word tells us that. It's by the word. James puts it this way. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all, of all the created. We're to be the first evidences of the fact that the word of God transforms us, takes us from Satan's camp and puts us into God's camp, gives us a new birth, a new starting place, a new creation. But it's only because of the Word of God. And that's why it's so essential to be in the Word of God. Because the Word tells us how our lives can be made different. And that our home is no longer here confined to this place. But will eventually be heaven. Born again by the Word of God. But we're also cleansed by the Word. The Word of God will cleanse us. Ephesians 5, Paul writes, Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the Word. Some people relate that to baptism, and I have no problem with that. But the reality is, is that it's the Word that cleanses us. It's the Word of God that alters our lifestyle as we'll see again in a few moments. But we need to come to grips with the reality that if we're not in the Word of God, our lives will never change. Mm -hmm. Now, I used to be a good old boy. And I shared that with you. But I was a good old boy. I didn't give my parents that much distress or struggle. I was looked up at, looked up to in my community. Because I was a good old boy. I attended worship service every time the doors were open. I even learned to tithe very young in my, in my uh, employing time. I learned to do those things that were right according to the Word of God. The sad thing was nobody ever told me how I could be born again. No one ever told me that God's Word still needed to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. My problem was that I thought I was okay. But it was because I never got into the Word of God to find out how the Word of God was to transform me, cleanse me. Even though I was a good old boy, I knew I had problems. I knew the secret areas of my heart. I knew no one ever told me that the Word of God transforms us. Psalm 119, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your Word. How do we live the way God wants us to? It's only because of the Word of God. The Word of God transforms our minds. And that's why Paul writes and tells us that we're to have our minds renewed by the Word of God. Renew. But it'll never happen if we don't get into the Word of God. Thirdly, we're saved by the Word. Now, it is true that being born again is to be saved, but I want us to look a little bit beyond that. Once we are born again and saved for eternity, there's still a lot of living to do. There's still a lot of struggles that we will go through. And it's the Word of God that transforms us from just struggling to rejoicing in the fact that God's still in, the, in control. That God still has everything under uh, in His hand. Timothy, Paul writes, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them. Because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. 
Watch your life and your doctrine. And the, watch that word. Get that word in you so that that will transform your life. People are watching. Our lives are supposed to be different. We are supposed to, as born-again people, have a different in our lives, different aspect for everyone to see. Something different about us. Something with a hope that no one else has. James writes it this way, Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. My friends, I'm talking about struggles that we have in this life. Saved in the struggles. When Jesus was confronted by the devil in the wilderness, what did he use to beat him? The word of God. It is written, Satan. It is written. It is written. And the more we can declare to the enemy when he attacks us, it is written, the more victory we have regardless of what he throws at us. But we've got to know what the word of God is. We've got to know that the word of God says by his stripes we are healed. We've got to know by the word of God, from the word of God, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Yep. We need to know from the word of God that no matter what circumstance or situation we face, when we begin to declare the word of God, we begin to walk in victory regardless of what the enemy throws at us. Yep. Come on now. Yep. Regardless, but it's because of the word of God. And the only way that we can do that is if we know the word of God. You know, God can save us for all eternity and we can struggle with all kinds of hellishness down here. And we probably possibly will. But the reality is, is that the more we quote the, the, the enemy, the, the word of God, the greater that sword has of penetrating him so that we can walk in victory. Yep. Our job is to bring down the strongholds and those strongholds are brought down by the word of God. Yep. The strongholds that come against us. The strongholds that stand against us. Confessing the word of God. And there isn't any greater way to confess it than to pray it. Go to the book of Psalms. Those Psalms are prayers in many cases. And you know if you pray, if you pray the word of God... You're always praying the will of God because God's will and God's word are linked together. Just open up the Psalms and begin. In the struggle, there are so many Psalms in which David struggled. But at the end of those struggles, at the end of those Psalms, he said, but God be praised. God's still in control. You see, God inhabits the praises of his people. And the more we learn of the word of God and the more we praise God in our circumstances and situations, the more we release the word of God to fight the enemy, the greater we have of walking through this life saved. Amen. Amen. Yep. And it's time that the church recognizes that it's the word of God that saves us. Saves us from all that stuff. Oh, we may still have to go through some of it. And I'm not putting that, I'm not saying that. We may have to go through it. But I would rather go through it with victory than go through it with defeat. Amen. I'd rather go through it knowing that my God is able to do far more and exceedingly beyond anything I ask or think than to think that he can't do it. I'm more well, I'm more, because of the word of God, I'm more willing to confess his word in my battle than confess defeat in the struggle. The word of God is powerful as a two-edged sword. And my friends, when we start swinging that two-edged sword, the devil can't stand it. He has to flee. Yep. And it's time we picked up that two-edged sword of his word, began to speak that word with power and boldness. Begin to declare, the enemy is under my feet yep. by the grace yep. of God. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to speak the word of God because I'm saved by the word of God. Yep. Fourthly, we grow by the word of God. Peter writes, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So that you may grow up in your salvation. Crave that pure spiritual milk. He's talking about the very basics of the scriptures. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. The basics. Jesus died for us. Jesus carried our sins. Jesus resurrected with power for us. The basics. The pure spiritual milk. Crave that. We can sing. We can, we can have chosen the song. You know, I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Because we need to hear those kinds of words constantly. Because they're just reminders of the basics. Crave the pure spiritual milk. The problem is, is that too many of us are still on the bottle. Hello? Too many of us are still on the bottle, still drinking the basics, and we're not growing up. And, and so we see from Hebrews chapter 5, everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see, in this day and age, we are bombarded by evil. Mm -hmm. yep. And the Bible tells us that there will come a time in which people will say, evil is good and good is evil. And my friends, we're living in that age. Yep. Yep. We're a whole lot closer than we've ever been to Jesus coming back. Yep. And I want you to understand something. If it's going to bring Jesus back, come on, enemy, yep. just do your thing yep. because I want to see Jesus Amen. put that Eastern sky. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. At the same time, our responsibility is to grow up. Our responsibility is to get into the deeper things of God. And the only way to do that is to get into the Word of God. I had the great privilege this week of talking with a young man who will soon become an ordained minister within ECO because I'm on that board that, that okays whether he makes it or not. And one thing that I learned from him about him was that he was a deep seeker. He really got into the depths of the Word of God. He's a very, he's a, a beautiful young fellow. I say young because he's younger than me and anybody's younger than me is young. But the reality is, is that he's really wanting to take the solid word of God. He, he, he teaches young people right now. He's a youth pastor. But he takes some of the deepest things and he breaks them down so that they can understand them. And so that they can mull them over. And I can just see this young fella doing this with these people. This great scholar, and he is a scholar. Take the word of God and transform it. Our responsibility is to do the same thing. Yep. Get into the depths of the Word of God and begin to use the depths of the Word of God to speak to not only our circumstances, but to those around us. To tell people that not only Jesus is the answer, but here is how He's the answer. Because He's the answer, because by His stripes we are healed. And to keep confessing that and believing that but then going deeper than that and saying, praise the Lord anyway. Praise the Lord always. Praise. My friends, I don't know about you, but there are times when it's hard to praise the Lord, but it's precisely in those depths 
of not wanting to praise that we need to praise. And when we praise, God's power is released within us because God inhabits the presence of his people. And the more we get into the word of God, the more we begin to discern the reality that the more I give him glory and give him praise, no matter what I'm going through, the greater his glory and honor will be and the greater my total being will be. Amen. But I've got to get into the depths, you know, no matter what the struggle is, get into those depths and begin to confess the word. Devil.